Okay, this is Elder Sister Debbie. This is the second study of the title, The Angel That Would Be King. The first study was about the Sherahims. S-E-R-A-P-H-I-M. These are the ones that hangs around God's throne. They have six wings. Two, they cover their feet. Two, they cover their face. And two, they fly with. They are mentioned in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Okay? Now, the second trot of angels, uh, quad angels that we're going to speak about are the cherubs. C-H-E-R-U-B-I-M. These are the second in the order of the choir of angels. The cherubs have four faces. And they have four wings. With two, they cover their feet. And with two, they fly with. Um, they are also known as to be the those that are full of wisdom. And what they do is they contemplate God's providence and they are assigned to protect special places. Okay. So the title of the teaching is the angel that would be king, but I first want to go through the trots of angels. So first we're going to look uh, with the cherub, which is spelled C-H-E-R-U-B-I-M. And I'm going to make sure I put the uh, the spelling of those angels on each one of those teachings so you know which one I've taught about in that particular series. So we're going to start in, with this one in the book of Exodus. The title of the message is The Angel That Would Be King. Exodus chapter 25. Verses 18 through 21. Exodus chapter 25, verses 18 through 21. Ready? And you shall make two cherubs, cherubims of gold. C H E R U B I M S. Of beaten work, which uh, work shall you make them in two ends of the mercy seat? And make one cherub on the one end and another cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubs on the two ends thereof. And the cherubs shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubs be verse 21 and you shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give to you that is Exodus chapter 25, verses 18 through 21. Today's teaching, we're talking about the cherubs. Cherub is the second in the highest of the highest archies of God's choirs of angels. The cherubs are the ones that have four faces. One of a bird, an eagle. One of a bull. One of a man. Um, and one of an ox. These are the four faces that they have. Okay. And they have four wings. Which two they cover their feet. And with two they fly with. The cherubs are the one that God put the fullness of wisdom in. The cherubs are the ones that he put praise in. Okay, but the cherubs or the cherubs are the ones that are full of wisdom. Now, here in the book of Exodus, he instructed Moses to build um, the tabernacle of for God, a house for God, a place of worship for the people to come in and for him to go in. Okay, and he said, Okay, now for the mercy seat, I want you to make two cherubs. And put one on one end and put one on the other. They he they are to have four faces.
because this is exactly how they look okay now the cherubs are the ones that are called full of wisdom and what they do is they are certain cherubs that God have assigned to certain places on earth and they are instructed to make sure that the wisdom of God which was however God see that thing is supposed to be worked out they make sure that that wisdom gets um, put into the thoughts of men and that it become exercised so that the will of God can be done on the earth okay for example when he um, instructed Moses to build the, t the tabernacle it was the cherubs that made sure that the wisdom of how to do it Moses knew see how the angels interact with us okay now they were also known they also names was to be called the fool of wisdom now let's get to the angel that would be king you we know that lucifer was an anointed cherub that's what he was he wasn't a share of him he wasn't a throne he wasn't just another angel he was a cherub the bible tells this about lucifer he was one that was full of wisdom see the description so even um the scribe enoch wrote about him where god says do he think that i have gave him all wisdom of my kingdom no he is his wisdom is limited so even though so even though god um put a um, gate shared with the chair the cherubs the wisdom of the kingdom he did not fill them with all his knowledge where they can take over his kingdom no or they can do things their own way no god just gave him the wisdom of how to set up things so the the angel that would be king we're talking about lucifer and that was his name before it was changed and because of the wisdom that he had about how to set up a kingdom how to set up a government how to set up the order of people how um, um armies are supposed to be formed how people are supposed to move and to um to be able to build different things because god put in him wisdom to teach us wisdom he thought that he himself would be king he says now i am full of wisdom i know how to do this so i'm going to do one for myself now we're going to look at that right the title of the message is the angel that would be king we're going to look at some more scriptures now we just read in the book of exodus where moses was instructed to build the ark of the covenant and to build the mercy seat these are the things on the these are the furniture and the different um things that should be inside of the temple of god as it is in heaven so it is on earth and he was instructed to make sure that there were sherums on each end of that mercy seat why because there's sherums that sits in the holy place See, see how important Sherem was? Because I, I, I want to make sure you understand the importance of these angels, these choirs of angels, the responsibility, the duty that they had, the power and the authority that they had to move in God's behalf. Okay? So when the angel that would be king, which was Lucifer, decided to rebel against god it was not taken lightly okay so let's look at um ezekiel chapter 10 verse 14 we're looking at cherubs so you can see um how cherubs were um uh, described and what they did so we're gonna go to um, ezekiel chapter 10 and verse um 14 here we go and every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. High of a cherub look, right? The second was the face of a man. The third was the face of a lion. 
and the fourth was the face of an eagle okay um, it says here as a notation this description is slightly different from the first in as much as the chair was substituted for an ox so uh, in verse 10 it described that fourth face as an ox but in verse 14 they said the face of a cherub so I'm assuming that the face of a cherub is the face of an ox okay <laughs> so here it is in order instead of being as they there the third it is as though in this second vision he recognizes this was empathically the cherub's form in other words the face of the ox because of the glory of the Lord was made to look like a cherub so God uh, remember Eze Ezekiel is writing what he sees okay and he looked again he said well no that's the face of an ox so apparently there's a face of an ox a face of an eagle a face of a, a man and the face of a lion so a cherub c-h-e-r-u-b-i-m have these are the ones that have the four faces these are the ones that have the four wings okay the cherubs are the one that have that god has created them and put within them the wisdom of god which means that they were given authority to be over special places on the earth and they are to make sure that how God, how the wisdom of how God said that should be, it is. So in order to set up a kingdom, you have to have the wisdom of God to set up a kingdom. In order to build an ark of a covenant and to build a house of a God, you have to have the wisdom of God. Because God wanted built according to what is profitable in heaven. For example, if Noah... God told Noah to build an ark. If he had not, if those cherubs had not been down here to help him, to make sure that the wisdom of how that thing should be built is done, it would have failed. How, how big to make it? He did not know. What materials could endure? He did not know. How to, in, how to divide and, and build the structure inside that um, inside the ark to house not only humans but animals and plants he did not know so it took the wisdom of God and cherubs are full of the wisdom of God so the angel that would be king who was Lucifer the Bible says he was the sum of wisdom yeah he was a cherub so Satan does not have one face if he's a cherub, he has four faces. He has the face of an ox, a face of a lion, a face of a man, and the face of an eagle. He has four faces. Cherubs do not have one. So all these depictions of of how Satan looked, you know, and you know the the, the red creature with the big horns, that is not correct. Okay, but we do know that in, um, but we do know that when people dabble into the occult, Satan can change his appearance and, and come as he choose to come toward a person. The Bible says he can put on the face of light if he wants. Okay, so if you see, um, um, a satanic Im image and it has this goat or this or this ox like face with the horns and all that yeah that's his true form if you see him and he came and he looked like he was a regular person yep that's his true form if he came and, and appears and he seemed as, as, as one that is of authority of a lion yep that's his true form because he has four faces okay and so we see here in the book of Ezekiel it is um, so described, okay? Um, and so it is also accurate. Okay, so we are talking about the sheriff. Remember, there are trods, 
of angels. And trot, let me spell trot for you. Trot is spelled T-R-I-A-D, which is uh, massive groups. Okay, these are trods. All right. Um, so we're talking about the cherub. We're talking about the angel that would be king. Now we're talking about Lucifer. But Lucifer was not a cherub. He was a cherub. That means he has four faces. That means he has um, four wings. Two he covers his feet. Two he flies with. Okay. Um, the cherubs are the ones of the trods of angels that will stay inside the presence of God. When Job, in Job, when God called, when he called the sons of God, the Bible says Satan came with them. Why? Because he was one of the cherubs. The, the cherubs are called the sons of God. Okay? All right. So let's go. And they are full of wisdom. They are in every place on this earth. And they are to make sure that how God says it should be done, set up, governed, is to make sure to make sure that the people understands it. So the the, full, the the wisdom of God is given to the angels. The angels then for make sure we understand the wisdom of God. So they are helpers of us as well. They make sure we know the wisdom. Okay, now let's look at cherubs again in the book of Revelation. Excuse all the sounds of life. We're going to the book of Revelation. And I'm going to make sure I spell each one of those um, angels' name on each teaching so you know which ones I'm talking about. Revelations. Now remember, it's trods, which means groups. Massive groups, okay? Um, Revelations chapter 4. And wait, it says 4 through 6. So, oh, chapter 4 through 6. Okay, well, that's a lot. So, I'm not going to read that. But if you would, I want you to start reading Revelations chapter 4 all the way through chapter 6. And in there, it describes the throne room of God, the living creatures of God, the heavenly worship of God, the presence of the Son, the Lamb of God were there, and the worship that is there. And you'll get an understanding of the massiveness of the trods of angels that are there and why they are there. Okay. Um, but let me just kind of say a little bit here. Um, stop making that noise, Debbie. Um, let me read just um, start them at the fourth chapter of Revelations. And I'm going to read just until maybe the eighth verse just to kind of put it in there but i need you to read revelations chapter four chapter five and chapter six and in those chapters baby if you don't get out of here let that go let it go now go in the front um i want you to read that so you can understand the the fullness of of what these trods of angels do. Trods are choirs of angels. That means they are massive groups. Okay. So here we go. Um, Revelations chapter 4. Verse 1 says. After this I looked. John wrote. And recorded. And behold a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard. Was as it were of a trumpet. Talking with me. As if it was a trumpet. That's how profound that voice was. Which said, come up here. And I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, um, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And only one sat on that throne. And it was God Almighty. So we understand what in the spirit means. That's when God begins to open up your eyes. He either bring you by your spirit there. Or he can physically bring you there. And allow you to see things that you would not see naturally. 
Okay. It says, And he who sat was to look upon like jasper and like sawdust stone. There was a rainbow around about the throne, in sight like unto emerald. So the glory and the brilliance of his, his presence, his spiritual being, um, illuminated this enormous, beautiful, glorious light. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders. Elders have very important seatings in the presence of God. The Bible says one that is to be an elder must have a good report, must be a person of faith, must be able to teach doctrine and teach the word of God. So for elders to sit in the house of God with him, you know you have a greater responsibility than what you've been doing. Okay, now watch this. They were clothed with white raiment, and they had their heads, uh, their head crown of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices. And there were seven lamps of the fire that was burning um, before the throne. And these was the seven spirits of God. So the Holy Spirit was there. The Holy Spirit is also known as the seven spirits of God. So you had the 24 elders that was there. You had God there on the throne. And you had the Holy Spirit in his presence. Now, who else did he see inside of that crystal structure that is called God's house? Verse 6 says, and, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne, in the midst of it and all around about the throne, there were four beasts. Okay. Now, um, there were four beasts full of eyes and before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast was like a calf. The third beast was like the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And the rest not, and they rest not day or night. And saying, holy, 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 almighty, which was is and is to come so we see in the presence of god we're talking about the first three trods of angels choirs massive angel groups of angels that are in the presence of god all the time and here john are describing that they had faces of oxes and faces of of, of eagles on them and they had uh, those that had the face of a man and and they had big voices and they had wings and they had um, eyes are on the wings and so you talking about massive angels okay these are called trods and they are called the the choirs of god this which means a massive amount of angels okay these were also living creatures god created them okay the angel that would be king god created him lucifer was created and he was created perfect. He was created beautiful. God dressed him with jewels all on his body. He was a cherub, one that stood in the presence of God. He had the sum of wisdom as cherubs are. And because of his beauty and because of the wisdom, which means he understood how government was supposed to be set up. He understood how offices are set up. He understood the workings in and out of royalty. He understood the order of faith. He understood how wars were set up. Um, armies were set up. He understood how to set up a kingdom. And because he thought so highly of himself, he thought that he had all the wisdom he himself can become a king. Today's study is about choirs or trods of angels. And the first main hierarchies that are in God's presence all the time are cherubims, cherubs, and thrones. Thrones are the wheels in the middle of the wheel ones. They are circular, spear-like, okay? Today's topic or teaching is the angel that would be king. There was an angel that wanted to be king. And his name was Lucifer. 
which means sun of the morning, day star, okay? It is spoken of him. What a beautiful name, Lucifer, right? It means sun of the morning, morning star, day star. He was decked with Jews. Now we're going to look at this, okay? This is an angel that would be king. Cherims are those, they are known, or they are also named as full of wisdom. God gave them the wisdom of God, or gave them wisdom, how to set up government how to set up provinces, how to set up states, how to set up armies, how to set up um, um, nations, citizenships, um, kingdoms. And so the wisdom of how to do a thing, cherubs had. Lucifer was a cherub or is a cherub. Cherubs have four faces. A face of an ox, a face of a lion, a face of a man, and a face of an eagle. Satan can change or use any face he choose to address someone. In occultive um, practices, there are those that have drawn um, a satanic being that has the face of an ox with horns. They have drawn some that had a face of a man with horns. Satan can illustrate either one of those faces that he wanted to. So... He doesn't have one face. He actually has four. He is an anointed cherub, which means he is an anointed guardian. Okay? He was in the presence of God. He was one of the third hierarchies that was in God's presence. Okay? Now, let's keep moving. We're going to look at um, the writings of Ezekiel because God gave Ezekiel this knowledge. So the prophet Ezekiel wrote in the 28th chapter and verses 11 through 19. Okay. Ready? This is a short reading, so I will read it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, Ezekiel said, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Not King Tyrus, the king of Tyrus. Now, um, the king of Tyrus, Tyrus was, uh, was a city that was in Lebanon. Okay, so this person was the king of Tyrus. Okay, he said, take up a lamentation. Okay, we're in the book of Ezekiel, the writing of Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, verse 11 through 19 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now remember, he says, a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, not the lamentation of king of Tyrus. Okay, so it says, um, and say unto him, thus said the Lord God. Now, listen to this. The king of Tyrus, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now, he's not talking about a physical king. It didn't say king Tyrus. He is the king of Tyrus. And the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel and said, take up an expression of grief. Begin to bring a grief about him. Right? Now listen to this. 
He told Ezekiel, the Lord God said this, and it came out of Ezekiel's mouth. He wasn't talking to a physical king. He was talking to the angel that would be king. All right, listen to this. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, say it unto him. He says, say it to the cherub. Say it to Lucifer. Say it to the anointed cherub. All right. Thus said the Lord God, you seal up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden of the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the berry, the oxen, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the cockable, and the gold. The workmanship of your tapestry which was the, the clothing and stuff, and of your pipes, they were prepared in you in the day that you were created. So God talked to Ezekiel, told Ezekiel, say these words to that cherub that would be king of Tyrus. And Tyrus is a city in Lebanon. So Ezekiel is actually bringing up his grief and he is saying it to Lucifer. And God told him, this is what you tell him. Isn't it amazing? He's talking to Lucifer. Isn't that amazing? Did you know that? Okay, here we go. He says in the 13th verse, you had been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Okay, that's a 13 verse. We just read that. 14 verse says, You are the anointed cherub, C-H-E-R-U-B, whose covers, you covers. You don't, he's not saying he covered himself. He covers God. He said, you are the anointed cherub. You're the one that covers God. You are his protector. You are the one that protects his glory. So there's a grief going out. Ezekiel was telling Lucifer what God is saying concerning him. He said, bring up this lamentation to him. Go tell him in his face. And so the prophet Ezekiel is talking to Lucifer. Did you know that? Okay, here we go. You are the anointed cherub who covers, and I have set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. Which is the stones of fire is that means that he walked up and down the altar. Which means he was in the holies of holies. Remember when God told Moses to build the tabernacle and the ark of covenant and the mercy seat and everything. He said, um... On the Ark of Covenant, make sure the mercy seat, you put two cherubs on each end. See, cherubs are in the holy place. Isn't that something? See, let's keep reading. This is a lamentation for the angelic king of Taurus. This is for Satan, right? Listen to verse 15. You were perfect in all your you was perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you by the multitude of your merchandise they have filled the midst of you with violence and you have sinned now remember Ezekiel is talking to Lucifer he is, the enetic, he is the angelic cherub, cherub that is over the Libyan. Okay, here we go. He said, you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God, which means he will not have provinces 
in the north. Remember, Satan says, I will set my kingdom in the side of the mount, in the side of the north, over those people. I will set my throne there. So this anointed cherub decided he was going to be king. And he was going to take over that part of the earth. Remember that cherubs are over special places. They were giving, given the full, the, the sum of wisdom to set up government, to set up order, to set up royalty. They knew how to set up the order of law. They knew how to put the citizens in place. They know how to cause the citizens to prosper. They knew how to set up a kingdom. That's what cherubs do. They help set up the provinces of God according to the wisdom of God. So everything that's set up, they do it according to how God says it should be done. So there's a plea, a, a limitation going up from Ezekiel toward that that um that angelic king of Taurus that wanted to be king the title of the teaching is the angel that would be king okay let's keep going you're going to see i'm going to prove it to you um verse 15 because because remember i told you that um god told moses he instructed moses how to set up the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the Altar of Sacrifices, um, um, the mercy seat, all that was given to him by instructions. That is called wisdom, okay? And cherubs are what they call the fullness of wisdom. So they helped him to set up that whole tabernacle. So with Lucifer, who is now called Satan, because he's a trickster and a deceiver now. His name has been changed. He knew how to set up government. He knew how to set up kingdom. He knew how to set up priesthood. He knew how to set up worship. He knows how to set up um, finances. He knew how to set up citizenship. He knew how to set up governmentship. Because he has the fullness of how to set up a kingdom. Because that's what cherubs do. Okay? Let's keep watching. So verse 15 says, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of your merchandises, they have filled the, the midst of your violence, of you with violence. And you have sinned. So see, because of the wisdom that he had and him seeing the wealth of the earth, he became full of violence. How? Because now he wants it all. He wants all the riches, all the gold and diamonds and topaz and everything that is hidden in this earth. He wants it. And it caused him to move in violence to get it. So he began to move upon mankind, call mankind to reject God, and then began to form armies and kingdoms that will begin to steal the spoils of the land unto his glory. Okay, here we go. Verse 16 says, by the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the midst, the midst of you with violence, and you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy you, a covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. You are no longer welcome in the house of God. He cannot walk into the house of God anymore. He was a covering angel, which means he was one of the three trods, the three hierarchies. Cherims is the second in line that was in the house of God. They were the coverings of God. So when God came down, the cherims came, the cherims came, and also came the thrones, which are the wheels in the middle of the wheels. Okay? Verse 17 says, Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty you have corrupted your wisdom by reasons of your brightness i will cast you to the ground i will lay you before kings that you may that they may behold you so god say i'm going to strip you down he said because of your beauty you have corrupted your wisdom 
Why? Because he used the wisdom of God to steal from the people of God, from the people of the earth, and set up his own kingdom. That is why. He said, God said, I will cast you down to the ground. I'm going to cast you before all those kings you set up. See, because all these kings, such as Russia and China, you know, and the, the Muslim, the uh, Islamic, Islamics, they are all under the kingdom of darkness. So they are part of Lucifer's um, spawns. Okay, here we go. And I'm not taking that back one bit. Verse 18 says, You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of you. It shall devour you, and I will bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them who behold you. So God just said that I'm going to punish you. I'm going to bring you with all passion in front of those people that you misled and you begin to rule. Hell will be your home. That's what's going to happen. And so we see that taking place. It says when Satan at long last will be thrown into the lake of fire. That's according to Revelation 20 and 10. Is Satan in, in, in hell? No, Satan is not in hell. Satan is on the earth because he has kingdoms up here. He has kingdoms and governments that he has set up. They are under his rulership and he, he uses his beauty. He uses the wisdom that God has and he set up kingdoms to come against those that God has set up as kingdoms. And so we have the fighting of darkness and light upon the earth. That is the end of the teaching of the anointed cherubs. There are three trods of angels and trods are choirs, which means massive okay of angels that stays in the presence of god and the three hierarchies are the cherubims the cherubs and the ones that are called thrones these are the wheels in the middle of the wheels they are always in god's sight the cherubs are the massive choir that brings praise and worship and exaltation all the time they go before god and announce god's magnificence then there are the anointed cherubs. The anointed cherubs have four faces. And they are the anointed guardians of God. They are full of God's wisdom. God uses them to set up kingdoms. And they go and they help mankind to set up kingdoms. But what Lucifer did as an anointed cherub is that he used his beauty. He used the... The, the four faces and he used the wisdom that God gave him how to set up kingdoms how to set up states and provinces how to set up um, pop, um, nations how to set up civilizations and he used it and saw all the spalls that God had put in the earth for mankind and with violence he wanted the merchandise and so he began to um, corrupt the hearts of people hearts against God and used and built himself a kingdom under the wisdom that he knew about how to build kingdoms and he began to set up sides of the north of kingdoms that will fight against God's people and fight against God and he used these kingdoms to steal the spoils of the earth the gold the silver the all the praise the worship and he set himself up as king. This is a teaching um, of an angel that would be king. In Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, verses 11 through 19, God told Ezekiel, the prophet, send a lamentation to, send up a lamentation to the king, upon the king, Upon the king of Taurus. He didn't say of the king of Taurus. He is the king upon the king of Taurus. And say these words. You were our anointed cherub. So Ezekiel is speaking to the angelic king of Taurus. He is an anointed cherub that was over 
Le Le um, Lebian, and he chose to use the fullness of his wisdom and his beauty and begin to corrupt the earth and those and because of the wisdom of God he knew how to set up kingdoms he knew how to set up provinces and states he knew how he knew how to build civilizations and he began to use them to steal the spoils that God put in the earth for mankind and begin to make himself rich upon the earth and so this is the end of that teaching of Sherebos <laughs>